So I also agree with John Bolton that Congress can't stop this deal. It's why one of the first phone calls I would make on day one in the Oval Office is to the Supreme Leader. He might not take my phone call, but he would get the message. And the message is, I don't care what the deal is that my predecessor signed, there's a new deal until you open every nuclear facility, every military facility to any time, anywhere inspections. We will make it as difficult as possible for you to move money around the global financial system. We can do that. We don't need anyone's help doing that. And we should do it. Wouldn't that be violating the deal that Obama struck then? Would that be, would, would that be difficult as a presidential matter to do that? Well, it would be violating the deal, it would be difficult, but it needs to be done. Because if we simply permit this regime to take this deal and run with it, I think history tells us that number one, they will cheat. Number two, there aren't enough inspections teeth in this deal to prevent them from moving forward. And number three, contrary to what the administration has said, both the Saudis as well as others have said this will accelerate a nuclear arms race in the Middle East and it will also further destabilize the region because Iran has made no commitments to quit funding their proxies, Hezbollah and the rest. In fact, they're looking forward to doing more of that. Well, the president said today, though, um, Carly, that this doesn't mean all of our disagreements in the past are, are immediately erased with Iran. This just means it's a new day toward a more peaceful, more stable world, and that it shows you how all these multilateral agreements, although difficult to negotiate, can actually work to the betterment of mankind. I'm summing up what he said, but that's essentially what he said. And that's, I, I, yeah, I call it, right. I called it a, it, he's checking off a box in his legacy bucket list. That's right. Well, that's exactly right. And I think, sadly, uh, we know that Iran continues to shout death to America. We know that this supreme leader is implacable in his enmity towards the U.S. He's been very clear about that. Uh, as I say, we know that they've already been cheating. And look, we cannot allow multilateral interests to deter us from protecting our own interests. China and Russia have never been on our side of the table on this deal. They have always been negotiating on Iran's side because it is in China and Russia's interest to open the Iranian economy. Well, I think um, when we think of the money that business will make, and, and given your business background, I think there are probably a lot of uh, multinational corporations that don't probably con even consider themselves American anymore that are really just about the bottom line. And if they can make money in Iran, they're going to make money in Iran. If they can make money in Cuba, they're going to make money in Cuba, regardless of whether, and I'm not comparing the two, they're very different situations, but if, if money can be made, the money will be moved and, and made in Iran, regardless of the of the effect on America's security or how it empowers Iran. I'll let you sum up. Well, I think that's exactly right. And, you know, I've been talking about Iran's bad behavior. The problem, of course, with this deal, in addition to it being a deal with insufficient teeth, in addition to it giving Iran too much latitude, we have rewarded their bad behavior. So we have rewarded with this deal and the lifting of sanctions their strategy of destabilizing the region for the last 10 years. 30 years, actually, we have rewarded their imprisoning Americans. I mean, never once, apparently, have we discussed with them releasing the Americans they have in prison. We've rewarded their bad behavior just as we rewarded Cuba's bad behavior by lifting the embargo and reopening diplomatic relations. And the problem with this is when you continue to reward bad behavior, you get more bad behavior, not just on the part of Iran and Cuba, but on the part of every other one of our adversaries around the world. And so this makes the world a more dangerous place, not a safer place.